the throats of men in. For the sprints, the irresistible Lisa Morgan. Upper body 
in what we call a neutral position. Neutral means the upper body is shoulder, hip, and knee are in a straight line. So if we scoop down and we tip forward, then we are not engaging our core. And that's the biggest mistake. So coaches, when you watch this drill, you'll see some athletes are able to keep their upper body perfectly upright, and some are tipping forward. If they're tipping forward, they need more middle and lower back and uh, front core development. So let's do a great job of trying to stay upright. Hands on your hips. Watch Robin and Tom. Skip, skip, skip. Good. Got it? Okay. We're good. Watch your knee to touch the ground. If you don't have the rhythm of it, at the beginning, you'll figure it out. We're gonna do this like three times, okay? So I'm gonna say, skip, skip, scoop. Skip, skip, scoop. Skip, skip, scoop. Okay, ready, set, go. Skip, skip, scoop. Skip, skip, go. Skip, skip, skip. Go. Go. Skip, skip.
So what we're going to do next is a walking lunge for 10 steps. Okay? We're going to hold this position in the walking lunge for 10 steps. When you do your steps in your walking lunge, we want you to pretend like you're stepping over the cone to lunge out on every step. So it would be one, two, three, up to 10, and then jog it out. When your hands out in front, keep your arms locked out and stiff. It's gonna train your core. Walking lunge, ready, 10 steps. high school and a lot of you have teammates on the team that'll do this too then it's like this right we don't want that either we want to get better one two come on work three four up to ten got it okay uh, tom and robin if there's anyone that doesn't have a partner jump in with them and otherwise let's hold them accountable for doing awesome good, good. So, one of the assistants that's on my staff is a, he's like a real scientist. So he researches these like scientific abstracts that have been created for the last 50 years in the horizontal jumps. And he has concluded, I'm gonna share you what we've done in our, in our meets, it's amazing. 90% of the long jump is how fast you are in the last 10 meters before takeoff. That's 90% of your performance, which is why Robin might not have been a quote unquote specialized long jumper, but she can long jump 20 feet because 90% of your performance in the long jump is how fast you are in the last 10 meters before takeoff. So I know all of you are here to be jumpers, but 90% of your event, if you're the long jump, is how fast you can sprint a 55 meter dash. So you better be thinking I'm about to be a great 55 meter dash runner and the long jump will happen naturally. He built his own electronic timing system. He set it up at one of our invitationals that we hosted. And he placed the last 10 meters of the long jump. And kids are running down through every single time and we recorded every kid's 10 meter sprint and their long jump performance. It was 100% accurate. The kids who had the fastest last 10 meters jumped the farthest. 
the kids who had slower 10 meet, last 10 meters didn't jump as far. It was ranked one through 10, fastest to slowest, longest jump to shortest jump. 100%, it's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna spend some time on that. Triple jump, a little bit different. However, studies have shown 75% of the triple jump performance is how fast you are in the last 10 meters before takeoff. But there's other variables in the triple jump. So right now, we're gonna do what the sprinters are doing. We're gonna get really fast and work on the technical aspects of sprinting. So, a couple things. There's cues that we tell our athletes, okay? And you're gonna repeat after me when we do these. And every school has their own versions of how they say this. I'm just sharing with you what I tell the athletes that I coach. And could you all just kind of like model it as I tell it? The first thing is, when our foot hits the ground, it's our plant leg. And we want our plant leg straight. Plant leg's gotta be straight. That means shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle are in a straight line. Plant leg straight. So if I say plant leg, you're gonna yell straight all day long. I'm gonna randomly say plant leg, and you're gonna yell straight. So let's practice right now. Plant leg! Straight. Every time. Now the other thing, we're gonna talk about what we call five block. There's various, there's different ways to describe it, but we're gonna call this five, five block. Five block means knee is at the belly button. There's a 90 degree angle between your thigh and your shin, and that's the thigh block. So we're gonna say knee to belly button, knee to belly button, knee to belly button. There it is, right there. So if I say thigh, you're gonna yell block. Thigh! Block. Every time. And then, the most important, we're gonna talk about the ankle flexion. It's called dorsiflexion. So we want the opposite of a ballerina toe. We want a track and field toe which is the toe pulled up to the knee. So when I say Dorsey, you're gonna say flex. Dorsey. Flex. So plant leg. Straight. Five. Block. Dorsey. Flex. Now we're not caffeinated. I'm serious. Like if we're, if we're ready to go, you are yelling at the top of your lungs. When I am saying plant leg, you're yelling straight. Because it's time to move now. Ready? Plant leg. Straight. Five. Block. Dorsey. Flex. That's how you have to compete, okay? The first drill we're gonna do is gonna go directly to the beginning of that, of that uh, on the bench. It is gonna be called A walk. We're gonna do A walk two times. Round one, hands together, straight. Round two, handstand. So we're getting extra core development without doing sit-ups, okay? Here's how it should look. You are literally walking, plant leg straight, five block, dorsiflex. Pistol, ready, Tom and Robin, go. Down, 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 down. Plant leg straight. Thigh block. Dorsey flex. Could you please turn around and go back? Show them a handstand position. on your forefoot. So instead of your heel striking, a little more on this part of your foot. Ready, go! Punch, 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 punch the ground, punch the ground. Go! Now we're gonna go 
hands in. A walk. Put those hands over your head and train that core. Ready? Go. Punch. 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 Go. Good. Knees up. That's it. Good. Good. Go. Hands behind your ears. Hands. Pull back behind your ears. Like that. There you go. Go. Punch. 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 Hands behind your ears. Go. Athletes, we have a loss. right now we're getting extra core development and we're getting better at our mechanics from our hips down it's a simple thing so now we're gonna go a skip okay a skip in track and field they call this the a series why because you go a most important series B second most important series C third most important series you don't need B or C we need to be really good at A okay uh, Tom and Robin, could you demonstrate a skip, please, with a pistol, with pistol hands? Okay, ready? Let's go! Down, 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 down. Good. They're gonna come back. What they're doing is they're training their takeoff. If you do your drills right, you're getting like thousands of extra reps over the course of the season just by training right in the warm up. It's like cheating. It's awesome. Here we go. A skip. Ready. Go. Punch. Punch. Down. Down. Right now is so important. Okay. Um. So, Robin, just pull up your pull up your shorts. There you go. Good. All right. So the reason I asked Robin to pull up her shorts is not so you can see your muscles. Okay. It's so that we can look at the importance of having a straight plant leg. So, Tom, will you just hold? Have Robin just hold a plant leg straight position? Good. Okay. So, it doesn't matter to me which leg is up. So, put one on my leg. Okay. So, let's say Robin has a slight bend in this knee right here. Right there. Okay. So, I'm looking at an angle of about that much. You can relax now, Robin. Okay? If she takes off with a slightly bent knee and the leg doesn't get full extension, I'm going to say that's worth about six to eight inches in your performance in the long jump. I'm gonna, I'm letting you know, it's probably worth about six to, eight, six to eight inches. If you are looking at the, like a stride, it's probably in half an inch per stride that you're losing. And if you add that up over every single step, it adds up a lot over the course of 100 meters and 200 meters. So therefore, right, can we go this side so they can all, okay. yep, so they can all see it again. So uh, drive your right knee up. There you go. Good. So when Robin takes off, we want this plant leg as straight as possible because she's getting the full range of her leg power being put in the ground. If it's bent, she is compromising spinning speed and distance. Okay, relax. And I'm letting you know a slight bend in the knee. If you take off and you don't fully extend, then you're losing about six to eight inches on your jump. So in our drills, what I noticed is when we did a skip, that some of our plant legs never got straight. We were still bent. So here's what I'm looking for. We're gonna do a skip one more time. We probably don't have room. Can you go both go like a couple a skips across? You can do it however you want to do. It. Down, down, down. Just their plant leg is so straight on every single rep. The way you get your plant leg straight, and coaches, this is a little thing to consider. When kids are too toey on their landing, that's when their plant leg bends. So we want to strike down almost flat footed when we're sprinting. Almost. We want to have about a cell phone size gap between the heel and the ground. The big mistake that kids in high school make is they land here 
and then the body can't support itself when it hits the ground on the toes. So yeah, sprinters kind of run on their toes. They actually just run on the front three quarters of their foot and their heels slightly off the ground. So actually Tom worked with one of my athletes. He was a, he went from essentially a 46, 47 foot triple jumper to a 50 foot triple jumper solely because Tom worked with them all summer on having a really good flat footed takeoff and the flat footed takeoff allowed him to get full extension of his leg. So we're gonna do a skip again. We're gonna go handstand again and we're gonna all work on having a really straight plant leg, every rep. Plant, straight, straight, straight. Put your foot down, keep it as almost flat as possible. You got it? Let's do it, here we go, hands.
Ready, go. Ha, ja, 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 ha, 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 ha. Go. Uh, staying inside the sprinter's box. You ever heard that phrase? If you have heard it, I'm going to demonstrate what the sprinter's box is referring to. And then if you... And if you haven't heard it, I'm going to explain the why. Okay? Because all of these things are going to be critically important to you performing well in these events. Okay, so let's pop up. Let's face it together. And on top. So there's a saying in sprint coaching about staying in the sprinter's box. Here's what we mean by that. When the knee is driving up, the five block, go ahead. If we stay in the sprinter's box and our hips travel over, do not kick your leg out. Move forward. With your left leg, move forward. Come on, come forward. Good. Our knee comes down straight and it keeps the 90 degree angle. We're staying in the sprinter's box. We're not kicking out and trying to get more. We're staying in the sprinter's box. Now you can step down on this one, stay in the sprinter's box. And then, as we are staying in the sprinter's box, our foot is coming underneath us. So if we were to do a hurdle, right, we're gonna come underneath. We're not going to kick up and be way up here with this over backside, with uh, overdoing our backside mechanics. Okay? So the reason why hurdle mobility drills is great for sprinting, great job, Todd. The reason why it's really good for sprinting is it teaches you to stay in the sprinter's box. We don't want front side mechanics to reach, and we don't want back side mechanics to go above our glutes because then we're out of the sprinter's box. So literally, we want to stay in the sprinter's box on every rep. And that's going to allow you to cycle faster, and it's going to allow you to be more efficient in your stride and your takeoff. Staying in the sprinter's box. So the reason I'm saying this is when we did high knees, some of you were like really, really, really rotating at your knee. When you do high knees, you want to rotate mostly at your hip. So we're going to do high knees one more time, A run, handstand. Okay, let's get these off. Okay, ready. Go. Pop, 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 The soccer style butt kick and the track and field butt kick are completely different. The soccer style butt kick looks like this. And now we're out of the spinner's box. The track and field butt kick looks like this. Cyclical, staying in the spinner's box. Pop, 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 right? So we're here. We're here. My whole dorsiflexion. I'm not going to kick out. So you're going to see, it's going to be challenging for you. Some of you are going to want to do this and kick and swing out. 
Rotate at your hip. And keep your foot right underneath your body, dorsi first. Tom, you want to demo? Go. He's up. Good. Here we go. That's it, right there. Okay? Let's go, this one. Ready? Go. Dorsey flex, Dorsey flex, Dorsey flex. Go! Good. Knee up. Heel the butt. Heel the butt. Heel the butt. Go! Heel the butt. 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 Go! Good. Quicker feet. Quicker feet. Quicker feet. Go! Good. Knee up a little bit. Kellenberg, knee up a little bit. Knee up a little bit. Knee up a little bit. Good. Good. Okay, we have one more of those drills. One more. Okay, we're gonna do butt kicks. We're gonna stay in pistol again. Okay? Stay in pistol. Please. You overall are doing great. I think this is maybe the, one of the harder drills to master. Okay? The reason why it's hard to master is because when you say kick your butt, you want to do this. I understand. You want to bring your heel underneath your butt. And then you want to flick your shin forward and hold dorsiflexion. Boom. Boom. Okay? So when you long jump or you triple jump and you take off, it's boom. And then you're going to develop a little more power in the angle that you want to jump far with. Okay, ready, set, go. Good, quick, good, 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 good. If I was coaching you, your practice 
on Wednesday would be what you just did, and then we do some rhythmic approaches, and we go home. Okay? So I want to emphasize how important it is that those drills that you just experienced and the intentional placement of your foot and the foot strike and the punch and the thigh block and the Dorsey flexion, that's got to be daily. So that becomes who you are as a sprinter and a jumper. Okay? So I know all of your coaches have some sort of warm up and they all do something similar. Make sure you're doing it with intentional thought about how much it's gonna allow you to become a better jumper. Because that's why you're here, okay? All right, so, everybody up. We're gonna get another set. So at practice, what I'll have is I'll have lines 
and I'll have like two and five, two and six, and then you know if you can have an athlete that's able to go through seven without getting out of the spinner's box, states. Seriously. It's like, if the kids are at seven, I know, let's go to states. And they're able to like motor through it and have like really good rhythm. So five feet, six feet, seven feet. Now sometimes the seven footers, I'll make them go five to work on leg turnovers to keep their form. But you want to graduate kids as they look like they're accomplishing the distance and you're like, okay, that looks like they're crowding it, then move the six to seven. And if it looks like seven is a little too much, then if you really want to go crazy, go six and a half. But it's a real pain to measure out. <laughs> okay? So that's the, that's the idea. So in the middle is a five foot line. It's okay to go to the five foot line to work on the rhythm and then maybe you get confident and go back to the six. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of these. But a lot of you, I, I can see it, I can hear it. You had that nice rhythm of what you want down the long triple jump runway. It was Okay, let's work our arms, eye socket the back line. Okay, are you ready? Oh yeah! Oh Knees up, Sofía, las rodillas, las rodillas arriba. Some of you need to go to seven. Fine, not today. But on your own, you can work with seven. I'd say six feet in between these is always a really like general, it's generally good, six feet. And for most of you, six feet is perfect. For some, five feet was short, but six feet was a little long, so you could go five and a half feet. You could kind of work through this, okay? Here's what the coaches were, were looking for. We're looking for all of you to push to the next barrier, not reach to the next barrier. That's the idea behind this, okay? And then the other thing is, I know some of you have a little bit of a low knee drive, right? And you're, some of you have a low knee drive. If you ever want to work on your knee drive, just put a little banana hurdle over these, and then it'll force you to get your knee up a little bit, okay? So I'm just trying to provide you things if you want to work on your own, what you can do. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you plug this into your phone. I'll tell you how many reps are appropriate, all those things, okay? But the idea behind this, when we're doing this, is we are really trying to put force in the ground in the rhythmic way. So that when it's time to get down the runway, you have great speed, and then at your last takeoff, you boop, 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 you get those feet down, and you take off and go, okay? If you've done three, hang out. If you haven't done three, let's get your third record. Okay, ready.
wicket runs. Okay. Then you're gonna write a little note. Purpose. Purpose. The purpose of the wicket run is to develop a rhythmic sprint. That's the purpose. So that's why we do it. A rhythmic sprint. So you all watch YouTube videos of the best in the world. You have Jumpers World Instagram, right? And you see the rhythm that these athletes are running down the road. So that's that's why we're doing this. So I'm gonna give you the distance between the wickets and what you're trying to accomplish with each distance. So five foot wickets. So the, the little barriers are five feet apart. Five foot wickets. What you're working on with five foot wickets is stride frequency. Stride frequency is how fast your legs are moving. That's what you're working on over five foot wickets. Stride frequency. Okay. Over six foot wickets, you're working on stride length. Now write a little note. Stride length. Write a little note. The goal is for you to develop both stride length and stride frequency over six foot wickets. So eventually you want the six foot wickets to become really fast. Because that means you're, every single foot time you put your foot in the ground, you're pushing your body further and further closer to the wicket. So that's your goal is to make six foot wickets really, really fast. If six foot wickets become too close, then you move to seven. So seven feet is really challenging. There's only about three athletes here that are capable of seven foot wickets appropriately today. Yes, we'll videotape you. We'll put, you give me the camera, we'll see how it feels. <laughs> All right, so seven foot wickets are really challenging. I'm letting you know that, and I'm just being real, you, in order to, have, to be over seven foot wickets, you probably have to long jump 20 feet minimum. So just keep that in mind. 20 feet, seven, seven, seven foot wickets. Okay? So girls, you're primarily gonna be working five foot and six foot. Boys, you're primarily gonna be working five feet and six feet until six feet gets really, really, really close and then you move to seven. And girls, if you're jumping like, you know, 19s, close to 20, then you're probably ready to go to seven foot wickets. So Robin would easily be able to go over seven, no problem. Okay? Okay, now next, how long should the wickets be? Like how long should you do this? So they, the total number of barriers should be 60 to 70 feet. And you should have a 10 to 15 meter run in. <coughs> 70 feet with a 10 meter run in. 10 to 15 meter run in. Okay? Alright, and then finally, how many should you do? And then how much rest should you have in between? So I would say the maximum number of wicked runs that you want to do in an entire practice, 7 to 8 maximum. Five to six minimum. High quality with lots of rest. So how much rest did you have in between? Minimum of three minutes. The worst thing that coaches do to jumpers is they over jump them and they over sprint them. It's the worst thing. Less is more. As long as you're getting high quality work in, then you are good with five to six repetitions over those wickets. Go home, eat well, go to sleep, and be great for the next day. 
okay? So I think that's the biggest challenge that all of you have. You want to be really good, and you're in the Northeast where we grind, where we say more is better. No, less is better. So I just gave you the number of reps, the distance total, the distance between the wickets, the number of repetitions, the distance of what you're trying to accomplish, and I tell you what, you'll be great down the runway during the year if you make wicket runs probably two times a week during your practice. You should do wicket runs twice a week during your practices. That's what I would recommend, two times a week. Okay, coaches, do you have any questions? Questions about what we've done so far before we go play in the sand. Yes. Uh, yes, I will. Yep, yep, I will do that. Yes. No, in between each one. Okay, in between each rep. So literally, this is the hardest thing, right? Because coaches are always telling the kids, hustle, 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 get back, right? I coach football in the fall, and I'm telling you, get out there. And then during track season, I'm telling the same kids, walk, slow it down. Take your time. Really, like slow down. Full recovery. I talk to them just so they'll rest. That's why I'm doing this for you now. I'm doing this so you'll actually rest before our next session. So you're getting your rest. Slow down, but when it's time to go, be really aggressive. Any other questions? I want you to hold, if I was a right footed jumper, I want you to hold this position as long as you possibly can. Like just hold it. As long as you possibly can. So we're looking for you to, if you were to take a photo, you want to see this for 80% of your airtime. Don't worry about the jump. Taking it easy, yep. controlling everything. And when you take off, I just want to see you. 
get up work on. and hold that knee. Staying up. upright through we'll, the air. We'll, we'll, we'll do everything no else after. Bring their feet so out focus front. on it. Big emphasis on holding that knee drive. Robin, you ready? Yes. We're going again. Tom, you ready? Yes. Okay, ready. Go! Yes. Hey. Go! Get out of this head! Yes. Thank you. Go! Control it. Thank you. Go! Control it. See this right here? Right there? Oh, that's funny. That's the position you want to do. 
Okay, flat leg. Now see how this knee is tilting to your right? You want to keep that straighter. And then see this toe is pointed down? You want that dorsiflexed, okay? And by doing that, it's gonna allow your body it's, you see your body, like this side's rotating and your upper body's rotating. So we want to make sure that everything is going in the direction where you want it to go, which is straight down, or like a straight line in the sand down there. Okay? One other minor thing that I think you could work on. At takeoff, see how you're bringing your, your takeoff leg like up to you? and that's forcing your upper body to like crunch over, you want to try to be longer at takeoff with your takeoff leg. Does that make sense? Okay, there you go. And then the triple jumpers are going to go triple jump and long jumpers are going to long jump, okay? I'm going to have fun. A lot of you need to work on what you're, uh, what's going to happen with your body during the flight, okay? So I'm going to take a small group and we're going to work on the arm action. Only arms. Tom and Rob are going to take two small groups and they're going to work on flight and entering the sand. Off the ramp, so you have some like room to take off of, and you got some time to fly. And another group is going to work on entering the sand from a standing long jump. So you can like work on getting your feet right. Okay? So, um, Tom, yes, sir. you do the uh, standing long jump? Yeah. Great. So Tom, we're going to work with out and just make sure that someone's always stepping on that. So kind of slide. Okay? Uh, Robin, will you work on the takeoffs off the board? Okay. okay. So now you're going to get like some flight. You're going to land it. You're going to go pretty far and you're going to feel, it's going to feel fun because you're taking off at a, you know, like from a higher distance. Now I'm going to take a group that's going to work on the arm action. We're going to rotate through all three groups. Okay? Uh, Tom and Bob. Yes. And there's going to be about, you know, like eight or nine of each group. And then um, we're going to rotate after, you know, like five or six minutes. Okay. So we're not going to spend too much time on it. We want to make sure we go through it. Okay? You got it? Flying through the air. Okay? So there's different ways that you can approach it, but this is all designed for to keep your upper body upright. So I'm going to teach you something that for some of you might be great and some of you might be out of your comfort zone. But I'm going to teach it to you. This was taught to me by Will Clay and Dwight Phillips. I trust both Will Clay and Dwight Phillips. So I trust what they say. Got it? All right. I would say they can go maybe like 10, start from 10 feet away from the ramp. Uh -huh. Just so they're, yeah, yeah, and get right up, yep. Okay, so the drill is called punch, swing, swing. Punch, swing, swing. So we've already punched the uppercut. And then we're going to swing, swing our arms very specifically. So I'm going to talk to you about if you're a right-footed jumper. Are there any right-footed jumpers here? Great, I'm going to go right-footed jumper first, and then I'm going to go left-footed jumper second. Okay. So if you're a right footed jumper, just get behind me so you can see it. Alright, so imagine you're running down the runway. Okay? I'm running down the runway. I, I just took off. Punch. Got it? Okay, now here's the swing, swing. Watch. Swing, swing. Do so it again. Punch. Swing, swing. Again, punch, 
swing, swing. If you do that, you're going to prevent your body from over-rotating, stay upright, and everything will work out. Okay? If you're a left-footed jumper, get behind you. Ready? Here we go. I'm running down the runway. I take off with my left foot. Punch with my left arm. Swing, swing. Punch. Swing, swing. Punch. Swing, swing. Punch, swing, swing. So what I do with the athletes in my school is we do one down, hundred yards as a turn. And they go 200 yards down and back of walking, and they go punch, swing, swing. Punch, swing, swing. Walking group. Then it gets you in rhythm. Punch, swing, swing. Punch, swing, swing. You're going to walk, and you're going to start down there. You're going to walk this way. Punch, swing, swing. I'm going to give you feedback. Four with the arms. Make the arms nice and long.
better if you're losing two feet because your arms came back from where you landed. So he's going, he's going again. And that was it. I just don't touch behind me. No, because he's I'll take I'll take I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll take you. So now it's just